Uh, all right, so we will now move uh, to the next talk by um, Professor Raghavan Vardarajan, um, and he's going to talk to us on design of a highly thermotolerant SARS-CoV-2 spike fragment immunogen. Raghavan, all yours. Uh, so I need to be given control of the uh, of this screen so that I can share my slides. It says waiting for approval. Uh, are you on a Mac, that one? No. Um, okay, okay, so it says now now it's being shared. Uh, so I share my desktop, right? Yeah. OK, I've shared my desktop. Can you see the slides? Can people see the slides? Or? Um, not, uh, not yet, yet. Not, yet. not yet. Can you try to share the PowerPoint file? It said you didn't get control. Your request for control was not accepted. Someone else has started sharing. OK, now maybe I'm sharing just a second. Uh, can you now see anything? Or? Yes, 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 yes. You just need to full make it full screen. OK, um, just a second. Done. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. And you can minimize the small black window, uh, which is at the right button. Yeah. OK, so uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk here and uh, and describe some of our recent work relative to SARS-CoV-2 <coughs> vaccine design. So the surface of the virus has a protein called the spike protein and that binds to the ACE2 receptor and initiates the process of cellular entry. And so most vaccine efforts are focused on eliciting protective antibodies against the spike protein. There are a number of vaccines which are currently in advanced phases of uh, clinical trials and they span a gamut from viral vectors to mRNA to uh, one protein based vaccine from Novavax. Very recently, um, uh, Pfizer and BioNTech announced a, a successful efficacy, uh, of course, albeit, albeit from a small number of uh, people in their phase three trial. So the uh, data that's available for these different types of vaccines uh, suggests that <laughs> neutralizing titers elicited by the vaccines in humans have been similar to those in small animals and they've been low for both the inactivated virus and the, the uh, viral vectors and better for mRNA and best for the uh, Novavax vaccine. And also relatively low titers of neutralizing antibodies appear sufficient to protect uh, non-human primates from severe lung pathology. And the correlates of protection uh, and especially the duration of protection after infection or vaccination, they remain to be elucidated. Now, one of the major barriers for widespread uh, deployment of these vaccines is that virtually all current formulations require low temperature storage prior to administration. So uh, our candidate va vaccine antigen is the receptor binding domain of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2. And what we found out, uh, so we started this work before the structure of the complex uh, of the RBD with ACE2 was available. And so based on analysis of the earlier SARS-CoV-1 uh, complex, we inferred what the likely binding residues would be. And what has come out over the past several months is that they're neutralizing antibodies which are uh, directed to almost all parts of the uh, RBD surface. Okay. So shown here is the uh, uh, domain structure of the spike protein in panel A. Panel B is uh, the, the uh, cryo-EM structure showing the location of the RBD. And C shows all the surface residues in RBD, which are targeted by one or other neutralizing antibody. And D shows the residues that so far, at least of a month ago, have not been uh, identified to be neutralizing antibody targets. And you can see that the major stretches are at the C-terminal end of the molecule. So we generated, uh, 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 we designed a fragment which contains uh, uh, most of the RBD and we put in an extra glycosylation site at the C terminus 
to shield this region uh, from uh, immunodominant what might be non-neutralizing antibodies. So we uh, made this like an engineered fragment, expressed it in mammalian cells, insect cells, and picia. We saw that the protein was highly thermotolerant and uh, elicited good titers of receptor competing antibodies in guinea pigs and mice. And in hamster challenge studies that we uh, recently did with Amit and Zegum, the uh, insect cell expressed RBD conferred protection. So this is the sequence of the RBD. In gray are the regions which were which we expected to be disordered in the structure and most and in fact this entire region was disordered when the structure came out and this region also. So our construct is from 331 to 532 um, and you know over the past few months people have made a variety of different constructs and some of them contain some additional and terminal extensions which are mostly disordered which we don't think is necessarily a good thing from the vaccine point of view. So uh, again, this just summarizes the residues that we took. The ACE2 uh, um, uh, <coughs> non-overlapping, these are residues that interact with some antibody. And this region in cyan is the receptor binding motif, which is the important part. So we express these, uh, the, the construct in mammalian cells. Uh, it expressed very well, surprisingly well. We got 220 mg per liter in a transient transfection. And uh, we, we also made versions which were deleted by at the end terminal residue, which contains a glycosylation site. So those expressed the highest one at the highest level. The other one expressed at a slightly lower level. Uh, permanent cell lines have been made and are being characterized. The proteins were monomeric and uh, well behaved. They bound ACE2 as well as another confirmation specific antibody with good affinity. And they had relatively reasonable thermal stability with a thermal melting temperature of about 50 degrees. We also expressed the same protein in insect cells. In insect cells, the glycans are much shorter. So the uh, overall molecular weight is a bit lower and it shows a very clean peak on gel filtration, similar th thermal stability ACE2 binding. And like the mammalian RBD, um, it's stable to various kinds of stresses. Uh, the yield was uh, quite a bit lower than what we got in transient transfection, but still res uh, respectable. And from a manufacturing standpoint, there's no permanent cell line required because this is done by a bacular virus. We also made the molecules in PICIA. Here you can see that uh, PICIA hyperglycosylate, so the bands are much broader. The uh, peaks are a little broader on gel filtration, but thermal stability is, is similar and antibody binding is, is also similar. So next, we also looked at the intact spike protein, ectodomain as a control. And in uh, this particular case, uh, again, the protein expressed pretty well in transient transfection in mammalian cells with a yield of about 25 mg per liter. The uh, once again, it was, it was very clean on gel filtration, bound ACE2 very well, and Somnath was able to look at the protein by negative stain as well as cryo EM. And the class averages that he got from the negative stain showed they compared uh, very well with what had been reported in the literature. So we knew that our molecule was uh, clean and, and well behaved. So next we looked uh, to see if we could lyophilize the protein. Now many proteins you can't lyophilize because once you lyophilize them, they aggregate. But fortunately we found that the spike protein was very amenable to lyophilization. So shown here are the thermal transitions before and after lyophilization. And we could keep the lyophilized protein at quite high temperatures for fairly long times. And then when we redissolved, you can see it retained its thermal melting profile. And uh, also, as I will show you, the ACE2 binding profile. Um, in, uh, in solution, we could keep it uh, up to 30, at 37 degrees, again, for reasonable times. When we heated up further, the, the protein uh, was irreversibly denatured. The lyophilized protein at 37 degrees could be kept for at least four weeks and you know more, and it behaved identically uh, before and after storage, which is very uh, important from a vaccine standpoint. And then this is the ACE2 binding, and you can see that 
the uh, ACE2 binding by SPR was identical. Uh, this is the, the four week uh, uh, time point is, is over here compared to the initial four week. So the uh, protein was uh, able to tolerate long term thermal stress quite exceptionally. And when we looked at the spike protein, it did not show the, the same characteristics. So uh, I don't have time to show that data. Um, so we then looked in guinea pigs and because that was a model easily available to us, uh, we had to start these experiments, you know, a few hours before the lockdown was announced. Uh, so it was all done at very short notice. Uh, so shown here are the, the protein was quite immunogenic uh, in, in guinea pigs. Uh, and the uh, um, we also took the PICIA RBD and the spike uh, ectodomain, and they were all fairly immunogenic. These are the self titers, and these are the titers to the spike 2P itself. And here the PICIA was a little less reactive. We devised an assay, a competition assay, to look at uh, ACE2 uh, competing antibodies as a surrogate neutralizing assay, and we found here also the RBD did. Uh, quite well. The PICIA protein, unfortunately, though it appeared well folded, did not produce those kinds of antibodies. And uh, when we uh, did neutralization assays, these were done in THSTI by Shell and Ramani. Uh, uh, we sh they showed that we got quite decent titers of neutralizing antibodies with the RBD. Surprisingly, the spike was more variable, at least in the guinea pig model. We also looked in mice, and mice also we got quite high ELISA titers after a prime and a boost, and quite good titers of ACE2 competing antibodies in this very stringent neutralizing neutralization assay. So these are neutralizing titers of, uh, uh, this is our gray line is our neutralizing titer, and this is a log scale. These are neutralization titers of many things which are in clinical trials, and you can see that ours compares quite favorably and with many of them and better than some of the ones uh, in late stage clinical trials. This is the one which showed 90% protection. Okay. And you can see also that the data across animals, so this is guinea pig, mice, macaques, and humans, is remarkably consistent for the same antigen. So we, are, we believe that this will do quite well in humans. We next, this is just to illustrate the differences in the molecular weights of these uh, different uh, types of molecules. So the insect RBDs, which have the smallest glycans, they look the cleanest. These two are the mammalian RBDs, and this is the uh, PICIA produced RBD. So uh, because for the insect uh, proteins, we don't have a requirement for a permanent cell line. Uh, we, in our initial challenge study, which was done again by Zegum and Amit at THSTI, uh, you have just heard is uh, a very nice description of the model. So this was evaluated along with the spike ectodomain in the hamster challenge. So hamsters were immunized at week zero and three with 20 micrograms of antigen, and they were challenged at week eight with a very high dose, 10 to the power five PFU of the virus. Now you can see here, uh, group G6 are the controlled unchallenged animals. Uh, Sorry, group nine is the control unchallenged uh, animals uh, in magenta. Uh, group six is our vaccinated animals with the RBD. Red is the spike vaccinated and the uh, green is the unvaccinated. So you can see that the RBD immunized animals are happily uh, eating and gaining weight and uh, generally doing quite well. Uh, you can see that the viral load is, is negligible. If this is at day four, the animals were sacrificed compared to the very high levels, uh, you know, in the, uh, uh, both in the uh, virus control. Surprisingly, and we don't understand why, we expected the spike ectodomain to do much better, but in this particular case, it did not do so. In terms of the cytokines, we got desirable uh, uh, cytokine uh, responses. So the IF and gamma was higher and the IL-17 was uh, lower. Uh, or similar to the mock control. And there are a whole bunch of other cytokines, but I won't uh, talk about them. Uh, these are the, the actual lungs. This is again the unchallenged control. These are the, uh, our RBD vaccinated animals, and these are the spike vaccinated animals. And you can see that their lungs look pretty good. There's a little bit of splenomegaly compared to the, uh, uh, com 
completely healthy animals. So the insect cell immunized RBD animals were well protected from challenge. They showed no weight loss and very little lung pathology relative to the healthy controls. And they showed uh, negligible lung viral titers and also favorable uh, cytokine profiles. So with an anti-inflammatory response. And surprisingly, these mammalian express spike 2 uh, ectodomain proteins had lower endpoint ELISA titers and they were not well protected. So these are the histopathology uh, of the lungs uh, following challenge. And here, you know, Amit may have to take some of the questions, but essentially uh, the IRBD animals, the insect RBD animals in group six showed very little uh, lung pathology. Um, so, you know, they, these, uh, so this shows some infiltration of cells, neutrophils into the, uh, into the clear spaces in the lung. Uh, they the plague, the green shows, you know, the breaks in the epithelial lining, so on and so forth. And the black is inflammation, where you have several of these cells congregated. And you can see that these features are all virtually absent in the, uh, RBD immunized animals. These are various different scores of uh, pathology. And you can see that in the blue uh, group, which is the RBD immunized animals, they are much lower uh, than in the other groups. So uh, on the whole, there's very little uh, lung pathology and uh, negligible uh, lung viral titers. Um, so uh, these are the overall conclusions of the talk. We designed a monomeric glycan engineered RBD protein fragment that is expressed at a high yield in multiple expression system, very high yield in mammalian cells. It has uh, the stability, uh, the conformation is unchanged before and after lyophilization. The protein is also quite resistant to longer term, you know, almost day-long thermal stress in solution at temperatures up to 50 degrees. And the lyophilized RBD was stable to transient uh, 1.5 hour exposure, even up to temperatures as high as 100 degrees, which of course one is not going to encounter in, in a real uh, vaccine setting, uh, unless somebody autoclaves the vaccines by mistake. Uh, the protein could be stored at 37 degrees for at least four weeks. Uh, I'm sure it could be stored longer. It retained the ACE2 binding and it is well folded. Unfortunately, the seria that was elicited with the PICIA expressed RBD were not neutralizing uh, and they were poorly cross reactive with the uh, mammalian cell expressed RBD and the spike to be uh, 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 proteins. So uh, in contrast, the mammalian cell expressed RBD elicited good titers uh, of neutralizing antibodies in guinea pigs, which compare favorably with vaccines which are currently in late stage clinical development. And uh, the hamsters immunized with insect cell expressed RBD were well protected against a quite high dose of uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 challenge. And they showed weight gain, insignificant lung viral load, and favorable cytokine profiles. So uh, such thermotolerant RBD derivatives are obviously very promising modalities to combat uh, COVID-19. And in our opinion, probably these will not uh, require uh, a cold chain. So I'd like to end here and thank uh, the people who did the work. Again, this was done in a very short period of time. Our actual experiments only started, I think, uh, uh, probably at the uh, towards the end of February. So a lot of people have worked very hard indeed. Uh, Samir did most of the immunogen designs um, and uh, 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 Kokab also helped with a lot of the expression. Savita did the uh, uh, Pikya expression and Mumun did some of the computational analysis. Uh, Shabas and Suhail worked on bacterially expressed versions. Um, and uh, Parishmita also uh, did some of the cloning of the mammalian RBD. Uh, Ishika from Somnath Dutta's lab was responsible for all the EM data I showed you. Uh, Stalin uh, Raj at Isotorandrum and his two students, Jeswin and Kartika, did some of the initial pseudoviral assays. And uh, at THSTI, Shailendra Shankar and Ramundeep Singh were responsible for the 
neutralization assays. These are neutralization assays with full length uh, replicative virus, so they are not easy to do. And all the hamster challenge studies were done by Zegum, uh, who works with Amit. This was work was initiated with a small grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Otherwise, it would have been difficult to get started. And uh, this work was done in very close collaboration with uh, uh, the startup Minvax. And uh, really, without them, we would have made no progress at all. All the animal studies were done by them, except for the hamster challenge. And uh, these are the people at Minvax who contributed and uh, got them you know, did a lot of work to get this going. So the uh, paper is now published in JBC. It was featured in uh, BBC News and a variety of other places. So with that, I will stop here and thank you. I think there should be plenty of time for questions. Yes. All right. Um, very nice, um, uh, Raghavan. Uh, so let me just start off. Uh, um, what uh, what were the viral loads in uh, um, in the vaccinated hamsters? Did it co go down completely, or there was uh, you know there were some? Uh, I could tell undetected. Oh. Pretty much, they were the same. You know, they were background like in healthy animals. Okay, and this was done over different days. Uh, uh, well, you know, we only had limited number per group, so we sacrificed oh. all the animals at day four which is about, uh, according to Amit, you know, almost the peak of the infection. OK, all right, OK. Um, yeah, are there any other questions? Uh, I, let me see. OK, uh, doesn't seem like. OK. All right. Uh, so yeah, there is there is a question here. Would you like to comment on emerging data on potential to uh, induce enhancing antibodies? Well, you know, in principle, anything can induce uh, enhancing antibodies. Historically, RBD uh, with the SARS earlier SARS-CoV-1 showed much less propensity to do this in um, you know in whatever animal studies were done. And so far, you know, we have protection, so it seems on the whole uh, unlikely. You know, after all, everyone who get, gets infected, many people have plenty of antibodies to, to the RBD. So, you know, I, and I don't know that they are at enhanced risk of infection, reinfection. There's no evidence to support that. So while it's possible, I mean, we have seen no evidence of that so far. Um, there is another question on uh, the differences that you get that the PKR, um, the responses to the PKR protein is non-neutralizing, whereas uh, with the mammalian one, it's neutralizing. What do you think are the possible reasons uh, for, the for that? The primary difference is the glycosylation. So I, you know, because of the hyperglycosylation in PKR, I think it must be covering some of the uh, uh, neutralizing epitopes, which is, uh, you know, the obvious neutralizing epitope is the the uh, ACE2 binding site. So uh, now, you know, one can regulate this maybe by uh, modulating the growth conditions and so on and so forth. We haven't done that. So it's possible that one could reduce the glycosylation by changing the medium and, you know, doing various other things. Just we, we have not explored that at all. All right. Um, have you, uh, there's another question on, uh, have you looked at the possibility whether you can generate cross-reactive antibodies against other coronaviruses? Uh, no, probably not, because the, uh, the receptor binding domain is not uh, cross-conserved amongst coronaviruses. So if one wanted to do that, probably you would need antibodies to the S2 region of the spike protein. Um, and so, so we don't expect that to be the case. All right. Thank you so much, Raghavan, for a very elegant uh, lecture. Uh, I would also take this opportunity to thank all the speakers. Um, and I'm so thankful to all of them because we have ended on time. So that should make Shashank very happy. Thank you all. <laughs>